But the other important question is, is there life out there already? Well, we don't, there's no very advanced life, but people speculate about simple life on Mars or in any of these other locations. But there's no hope of anything very exciting. But things are much brighter if we widen our horizons beyond the range of any probe we can actually imagine sending in the near future to the realm of the stars. Because we've learnt in the last 20 years something that makes the night sky much more interesting. Most of the stars you see in the sky and which have been looked at since antiquity are not just sort of twinkling balls of light. They are orbited by retinues of planets, just as the sun is orbited by the Earth and the other familiar planets. We infer this by not detecting the planets, that's difficult, but by detecting their effect on the star they're orbiting. And I mentioned one of the techniques that's used. It's very simple in principle. Supposing that you're looking from a long way away um, at the solar system in the plane of the orbit and you saw the <coughs> Earth moving across the sun. Then even if you couldn't see the Earth, then it would block out a bit of the sun's light. And so if you measure the sun's brightness, it would dim a little bit. And this technique allows you to infer the presence of a planet transiting across another star. You measure the star's brightness very precisely and look for changes. And this spacecraft, which was launched in 2009, spent three and a half years looking at an area of sky about seven degrees across in this, uh, and um, observing 150,000 stars in that part of the sky with a precision of one part in 100,000 measuring the brightness very precisely, and doing that over and over again, about once per hour. Looking for cases when you see a dip, and then a dip again, indicating a planet coming round and round. And Kepler has found evidence for at least 2,000 planets orbiting other stars. And of course, for everyone it finds, there are many others, because uh, it only finds the ones where we are looking in the plane of the orbit. We don't we don't see a transit otherwise. And these planets uh, can have their sizes estimated from how big the dip is in the, sun's, in the star's brightness, and also um, that gives you an indication of their orbit, because the time it takes to repeat tells you something about the year on that planet. And this uh, rather silly cartoon is a way of depicting um, all the uh, planets that have been found, uh, and this shows the masses and their orbits of scale. But special interest attaches to planets which are like the Earth, like the Earth in two respects. First, in being about the size of the Earth, and secondly, in being at the distance from their parent star, such that the temperature allows liquid water to exist. This is called the Goldilocks zone, not too hot and not too cold, which that's thought to be essential for life. And uh, this picture shows two of the best cases so far found. At the bottom, that shows us a, a sketch of our solar system, and uh, the, the one above it is a, a planet just found a couple of months ago, um, and then above it there's another planet found a, a year or so ago, uh, which is uh, closer in because it's orbiting a much smaller and fainter star than the Sun. But we can infer that there are, in our galaxy, probably literally billions of planets, many like the Earth. 